Hey, this is Jerry Visca, the publisher of Definers, and welcome to the final issue of 2017. This is the Simplify issue, an issue I've been wanting to create for quite some time. And I'm excited because we are all the way to in Galesburg, Illinois, with Susan Sharp, founder of a Sharp Difference. Com. And I got to tell you, that's one of my favorite <laughs> titles for a website. Susan, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Susan, I'm really excited about uh, sharing your creativity and your creative excellence with the world. And as a fellow creator and create, creator, uh, creative thinker, I really love what you're up to. So I'm excited about this live interview with you. So this is going to be a great time together. Now, there's a quote that you share in your profile. I love it. It goes like this. You cannot move swiftly to greater things if you have lots of physical and emotional stuff to pack. That really kicks off your profile in such a beautiful way. So Susan, share with us, what does life simplified mean to you and why is it essential to personal growth? Well, you know, we, we all approach life so differently. And I think one of the things that keeps me grounded is the fact that I don't like a lot of stuff. And so just being physically unencumbered by material things has become sort of a, a, a way of life for me. I have a yard sale every summer and I get rid of the stuff. And I say no when people, you know, when they find out I'm an artist, everyone wants to share all of their art materials that they never used and after a while you have to say no and I think that's sort of a personal uh, idea that you can you can say no to lots of different things that sort of muddy up your life and I think it's important to simplify because we live in a crazy busy multimedia world that can be so distracting and you have to be able to get the noise out of your life the physical noise, the physical burdens, you've got to be able to streamline your, your attention and your focus in a way that allows you to latch on to the things that are truly important. And so being able to simplify for me means being able to be more productive and being able to really channel my energy where I need to. It's really hard to focus some days and I think the older I get, the more ADD I get, <laughs> um, just, just because I feel that life pulls you in so many directions. So, yeah, so simplifying is, it's just crucial for success, I think. If you're happy with mediocrity, keep, keep going, but, um, you know, muddy up your life. But if you, if you don't want to be mediocre, I think you've got to get rid of some stuff. I love that. I love that, Susan. You know, you have to say no. And I think you've started to really master the art of saying no, so you can channel your, your creative energy to the things that you love, that really light you up. And you can see that even with just the, you know, the, the backdrop of all your beautiful art there, right? Oh, thanks. And, and I love that. I love it when you say get the noise, and, you know, get rid of the noise. And, and it, you're right, it is, it is easy to get distracted in today's very noisy world. So I think that's very profound. There's another quote you share, and I love it. It goes like this. I want you to be able to freely answer these questions in your quest for simplicity. And these are great questions. What are my gifts? What brings me joy? What motivates me? And that's right in line with a lot of my why time. And I just think those are profound questions. So, so share with us, because you're very passionate, a very passionate creator. How is your passion helping to helping to simplify the world and simplify other people's lives? Well, the reality is we live in a time where you have infinite choices. Anything you want to do, you can do it. Anything's within a monetary reach almost, unless you want to go on the space shuttle. Um, almost anyone can, uh, can afford to do lots and lots of different things because the price of things is, is really reasonable. And... So if you have infinite choices in life, and especially in North America, we, we, you know, we're very much focused on you can be anything you want to be. But the reality is, can you? Can you really do that? Or should you look at really where you're innately gifted? Uh, what's your own personal temperament? If you don't really like bugs, you probably shouldn't you know, choose a career in landscaping. You could. 
but that's probably not the best fit for you. So I think t finding out who you are as a person before you make major life decisions is pretty important. I'm always impressed by young people that get married very young and stay married. My parents got married when they were 18 and 23, and boy, most couples today wouldn't make it. They've been married 50, 53 years, and I think what a different time it is because we grow and change so much. I think the reality is they both had a good handle on who they were at a very young age. And I think sometimes with all of the choices we have in life, that gets muddied. We say, well, you can be anything you want to be. Well, boy, talk about um, shock to, to somebody to say, I have any number of choices. Oh, my goodness, what do I choose? And what if I'm, I choose incorrectly? And I think that's really hard for young people today to navigate that. And then if you're like me, sort of middle-aged at 49 going, I'm not satisfied anymore. I'm reinventing myself. I think you, you must go back to, well, where am I gifted? Where do my fundamental gifts lie? And how am I motivated? Am I internally motivated? That would be the introverts of the world like me. Or do you really need the stimuli of the world, the social aspect? Then those are more for the extroverts. I chose a very extroverted career in the theater. And it's really not me anymore. I love playwriting. I still love directing. I love students. But I have to be honest and say that that phase of my life is probably coming to a close because I'm not the same person as I was when I started teaching at 28. And at, this is, you know, now 20, how many years? I can't do math. They don't let me teach math for a reason. Um, but, you know, to, oh, to 23 years of teaching and I am, I'm not the same person. I don't want the same things. I don't bring the same energy to teaching that I used to. Still love students. I still love it on some level but my energies are, I think, going in a different direction. So if I were to stay in teaching very much longer, I think I'm doing a disservice to, to my students. Mm. It's just not where I'm at. So the ethical thing to do is to move on and, and reinvent myself in a way that, that is really simplifying my life because I'm not trying to be someone I'm not. Oh. And I, I'm not living very authentically if I stay too much longer. That's really profound, Susan. I love that you share that we all have infinite choices. And I like how you, you platform that with, you know, what are your, what's your own personal temperament? I think that's, I think that's right on. And I love this, this interview because it's, it's chock full of such great insights and tips. You know, I'm curious, what's lighting you up right now? What are some of the projects that you're working on that are just lighting up, lighting you up? What, what are they? Well, gosh, I think the, the art has become increasingly important in my life, and I find the ability to express myself that way is so gratifying. And not, I would not, 20 years ago, if you had told me that I was going to be an artist and sell my work online and, and have shipped paintings all over the world, I would, have, I would have said, oh, heavens no. I have no art training. Um, it's really you, a unique sort of turn in my life. but. I find that people ask me to paint things and they want to buy my work and how satisfying is that? Why would I not be attracted to that? I also think it's being true to my introverted self where I really need time away from people to refuel, love people, but in short spurts. And then I need to go back and refuel. I, I can't, I can't be the life of the party all night. <laughs> I need to, Few, few, few meaningful conversations, and then I'm ready to hit the road. So I'm not, uh, and maybe in my younger days, I had a more extroverted side of me, but the older I get, my energies are just different. And so I love speaking, and I love writing, and my art, those are things that are, are sort of energizing me right now. I get asked to write a lot of things, and again, never would have considered myself a writer, but it sort of revealed itself as one of my gifts. And uh, Deb Crow and I just talked this morning right. about collaborating on a project. That's right. And so that will be exciting if, if we can work all that out. Another friend asked me to write a novel when he wants to, to make a movie out of that novel. And I've written several plays that I hope to get published. That's one of the things I'm pouring my energies into uh, between now and Christmas is, getting those manuscripts 
cleaned up and submitted. And um, so I find that there's only a lack of things to do if I check out. Otherwise, the world is presenting me with infinite projects. That's excellent. That's excellent. I love that, Susan. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's tremendous to hear. You, you epitomize this philosophy that I have. I had written a, uh, an earlier book called I Don't Know What the Hell I'm Doing. But I know why. And I love that you shared that you weren't uh, formally trained, but yet that genius is inside of you. And that's the whole energy of not needing to know the how. It's just needing to know what lights you up, like those questions, what motivates you. So I think you, you've done that so well. There's another quote here that I love. It goes like this. Be selective about the people and the activities in which you invest your time. And what I love about that is you're, you're, you're really you're really revealing how you're allocating your energy only to the things you love. So tell us, how do you help the world simplify? How are, how are you helping the world simplify? Hopefully it's helping them to see their own creativity and that creativity can be in things like creative problem solving. Um, there's a book called uh, Inside the Box by Jacob Goldenberg and, um, oh, I had it here. Um, I forget the other guy's name, but Inside the Box is really about seeing the solution to the problem being very close to the problem. And the example they give is a permanent marker written all over a whiteboard. And they only have around them a dry erase uh, marker, a permanent marker, and an eraser. That's, that's the most adjacent things near the problem. And they say, well, why don't we take the dry erase marker and trace over the permanent marker and sure enough the compounds in the dry erase marker take it off because the only difference between a permanent marker and a dry erase marker is the polymer mm. that binds the ink together and so there you have the solution very close so I encourage people in their quest for creative problem solving or creative solutions in their life or even expanding their own creativity to you don't have to you know, you don't have to throw your whole life out and start over. You don't have to move. You don't have to change every book in your library. You don't have to change your wardrobe. You don't have to, you know, adopt an alias. Take one step towards being someone different. One step towards solving your own problems by looking at the resources that you have around you. Who are you connected with? I think, you know, things like LinkedIn and Facebook and, and, and the, the publications that you put out are a tremendous tool in connecting people with other like-minded people. And so I don't think to reinvent yourself that it's, it's all about a total do-over. In fact, I think it's taking the best parts of your work and life experience and using them in the new life that you want to create for yourself. So create, definitely tapping into your creativity and using it uh, to, to, to create the kind of life that you want for yourself. And then the, the other thing that I try to help people with is to, uh, we're so, there's a book uh, by Danielle Creasa called Your Inner Critic is a Big Jerk. Mm -hmm. And in that book, she talks about how you know, we essentially talk ourselves out of what we can do before we've even tried. And I have said this for years, so I was really glad to see her book when it came out a few years ago. Um, I have said to people, why, why have you already thrown that idea out before you've explored it? Why have you already said that you cannot before you've even tried? Well, so I'm not a very athletic person but I have on my bucket list that I would like to run a marathon. Now, I know all of the steps that it would need to take to get me to run that marathon. I haven't ruled it out. I'm 49 and not in the best shape of my life, but I haven't ruled it out. Why? One, yes, I'm a great optimist. But two, I believe I understand my own mental capacity. And I think given that, given how persistent I am about things, then I could probably do it. Do I want to take all the sacrifices to do it? Well, how important is it to you, right? That's the question we keep coming back to. So I guess I try to help people by talking them uh, out of their, their own self-doubt. The fact is, I think people have far more skills than they give themselves credit for. And it's so easy to listen to that one negative voice in your life. But what about the 50 positive voices? You know, why doesn't anybody ever worry like, oh, what if they love me? 
what if I didn't print enough copies of my book? What if I get asked to speak somewhere? Nobody worries like that, right? We always, it's like worry is like gravity. It always takes us to the, the lowest point, right? So why can't you turn that around and say, what if, what if I get mobbed for interviews? Wouldn't that be a great way to start worrying? And so we need to, we need to sort of change our, the voice in our own mind, our own, our own self-concept. Because all we really see is all the bad things we've done, all the, all the places we've failed, right? We need to start seeing ourselves like other people probably see us, which is a lot better and a lot more uh, wonderful than, than we see ourselves. It's fantastic. You know, Susan, I'm taking so many notes. This is, I'm calling these sharp solutions. <laughs> I tell you, these these are great insights, and I, I love this. You know, I love that we can share this with, with with the listeners. But I love that. See your own creativity. Tap into it. Now you have to be one, the one that sees that. Um, I want to uh, before we get to the last question, which is a legacy question. I want to know how can people get involved with you right now? How can they get involved with your work? Uh, where would you like them to go to? Uh, th thanks for that question. Um, I've revived a podcast that I started uh, uh, earlier in the year and then we took a hiatus and, and now it's, it's sort of, it's reinvented itself. And so I, I, I'd love uh, if there are other like-minded people like me that would like to be podcast guests. That's, that's one way to reach out. And uh, you can find all of my stuff, all of my endeavors in one location at a sharp difference.com. And underneath there, you'll see several tabs and there's the, the book, the change that I'm in, and there's um, links to different creative resources. And uh, my email is susan at a sharp difference.com. Um, they can also, if you're a phone person, and I think in this day and age of electronic stuff that nobody picks up the phone anymore, but call me 855-547-4277, or that's 855 sharp. I think that's how that ends up coming out. So, um, five, four sharp, maybe again, math, not my strong suit, counting basic stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love that. A sharp difference.com. And I just want to point out, uh, you mentioned Deb Crow, just a lovely, lovely soul. I'm so, we're so honored that she connected you with us. Yes. And, you know, we interviewed her earlier uh, today and, and, she was so excited when she saw your profile and she's like, she was so excited that you guys were being interviewed on the same day. So yeah, she, she, yeah, she, she uh, has, she does have a unique gift in connecting people, but I, I think it's more than that. I, I think where we're really kindred spirits is the, the energy seemed to align. You know, we, we both, we think alike in that energy and that need to not keep everything within, but, but to share the wisdom. All right. Okay. So Susan, this is my last question for you. And it always, I always find this an emotional question, but I want you to think, you know, years from now when, when I'm with you and uh, we're up in the heavens painting together and writing together and, and artistically creating together, what, what do you want others to say about Susan Sharp? How did Susan Sharp live her life? That is a profound question. And I, th I think it's important to leave some sort of legacy with the world. Um, I'm probably not going to leave the, at 49, I'm probably not going to leave the world children, but I can leave uh, a passion for people being their best creative self. And at the end of the day, accomplishments aside, paintings aside, anything I've ever written aside, I want people to say, she was really kind she took time she showed interest in me she uh of my students i guess i would want them to say that i helped them to become better people and of my students that are not so much academic students but students of life i would say i'd love to to be to be credited with getting somebody on a path to being a better person to, to taking a leap of faith and saying, there's got to be more than this world than what I've already experienced. So if I'm not finding it, then I better create it. If it's not already out there existing, and I know I want something more, well, I'm going to create it. I'm just going to make it for myself versus waiting for life to invite us 
to something. I'm going to go make it myself. I'm going to, I'm going to write it myself. I'm going to make the own, my own script for how my life should be. And boy, if I could help somebody to sort of get out of their rut and be a better version of their self, that would be, that would be more than I could ask for in life. It brings me to tears. Susan Sharp, this is a profile of passion. Okay, that's the best way for me to describe it. We call it a sharp difference, pages 28 and 29. And it's the new simplify issue of definers. Susan, on behalf of definers and everyday people worldwide doing extraordinary things, we want to thank you for bringing your creativity, your passion, your sharp solutions, and your beautiful light to this issue of definers. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to, to know you and uh, to be a part of, a little part of what you're doing. Thank you. 